So I just want to uh, start with prayer, inviting the Holy Spirit to help us to break down what I'm about to share. And I believe the Holy Spirit will be um, breaking down some mental strongholds tonight in Jesus' name. And also people will be receiving deliverance as well. Precious Holy Spirit, I come to you right now and I thank you so much that you are here already. And I ask you that you will begin to move upon this place, move upon every person, Lord. And everything that I'm going to speak about, that you will empower my words, that you will bring revelation to people, Lord. That it will not be just words, but it will be words with power and anointing. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. I uh, was born in, so previous, um, in Soviet Union. I came to America when I was 19 years of age. So I grew up in Russia and I did not know English. So I had to learn from zero. <laughs> so I apologize in advance if I make mistakes and I have a thick accent. But uh, anyways, that apart from that, I grew up in Soviet Union. I am a pastor's kid. I am a fifth generation Christian and my parents, they were pastors in Moscow. And when I was growing up, I, I, am, I am a middle child and I am one of the five kids. And so we, I come from a larger family. And uh, when I was growing up in Soviet Union, Christianity, um, Protestant Christianity and Christianity in general, it was really not accepted. And uh, people look down upon you. It's really, it was really like atheistic uh, society that I was growing up as a young girl in and I was going to school and my teachers they knew about my family that they were pastors we were Christians and to be a Christian especially Protestant Christian it was considered to be an American religion it was something like a sect that's how they viewed it it was something strange something completely like out of this world for um, Soviet Russian people back then. And so you can imagine coming to school as a little girl, I struggled because even teachers, they looked down upon me. Uh, kids, like I had a hard time making friends and it was just difficult growing up. And I already experienced the, that rejection of society. And when I was growing up as a kid, like I wanted to have friends so bad, especially in my teenage years, but I couldn't because I didn't feel like I fit in. They always uh, talked to me like I was a strange, weird person. <laughs> Anyways, I remember one day uh, I was sitting with my friends and watching TV, so I thought they were my friends. And I was watching a TV with them, and there was this American preacher <laughs> that came up on the screen with translation. And my friend got so angry, he took a shoe and he threw at me. And I was just sitting there, and he told me, this is your stupid religion. And I got so scared, and I was just a teenager. I got so scared and I shut down and I closed in and I started to draw away from the Lord. I didn't know really personally God. I did it through my parents. But then I realized that I did not want that. I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to have friends. I wanted normal things like normal kids have. And so I started to be very angry and closed in child and a teenager. And I started to go down the hill basically. My teenage years, I started to party. I started to look for acceptance in all kinds of different um, bad companies and clubs and electronic music and all of that and all of all the rave parties that came with that all of that and at the end of the day I found myself so empty and so broken being a pastor's kid not knowing Jesus looking for acceptance and I remember 2005 in September our last church service before we moved to the United States with my family I came to church and I was standing there and there was worship going on and 
I remember I started to talk to God in my mind and I said God are you even real because at that point I hit the bottom emotionally I was so depressed I was in such a darkness I didn't have purpose to live I was so alone even pursuing friends and that lifestyle I still ended up alone alone in the darkness and so I was talking to the Lord in my mind and asking Lord God are you real are you real just like simple questions like that and in a split second as worship was going on the Holy Spirit's presence took over me so strongly I was standing there and I felt like I was being taken underwater so the the sound started to disappear as though like you go underwater like the sound is different that's how I felt everything started to move away and God started to speak to me at that moment I'm I'm I will never forget that moment he called me by my name and he said Lana I am here and I am real and in that moment I could not believe what I was experiencing for the first time I experienced the precious presence of the Holy Spirit and I experienced the reality of God personally not just through my parents and so we moved to the United States but I didn't give my life to Jesus yet then I just experienced the reality of God we know that there's a difference to experience God and to actually lay your life down and surrender your life to Jesus Christ right so when I moved to the United States uh, with my family we go to we started to go to the largest charismatic uh, Russian church in the United States which was uh, Church of Truth and they had such a powerful revivals with the youth going on and I started to go to the church and I didn't even understand anything I had to use translation and it was so interesting remembering back and I remember one month into being in America I was standing there at the youth service and God touches me again strongly and at that moment God begins to challenge me and he says I want you to lay your life down for me I want you to give your life to me and I am standing there bawling my eyes out and I'm surrendering my life to God for the first time in my life at 19 years of age imagine growing up in a Christian home coming being as a uh, in a fifth generation Christian and not knowing God and so at that moment I gave my life to Jesus Christ completely surrendered to God it was 2005 until now I'm walking with the Lord and I can say that that was the best decision of my life not only to experience God but to actually surrender my life to Jesus so when five years down the road I get married I meet my beautiful <laughs> wonderful husband I get married and I move away from my city from my family I move into his town to try cities and everything was very brand new to me uh, I had no family around brand new marriage brand new city brand new church no friends uh, everything was so brand new and something got triggered in me I started to struggle I started to experience very um, severe nightmares depression now the nightmares I'm talking about is I remember one time not even one time many times I was screaming in my nightmare at night and my husband he had to wake me up because I was sweating and screaming at night that's how I was tormented during my nighttime I was I started to have depression I allowed so much negativity into my, into myself I started to hate people I started to experience insecurities jealousy loneliness depression and all of that dark cloud started to follow me and mind you my husband was already a youth pastor and I come into the picture and our marriage started to struggle on the top of that and I don't know what's going on with me I have no idea uh, what's happening we were so puzzled we were like 
trying to figure out what was going on and I always felt like this demonic cloud was like literally walking and sitting on me I didn't know how to shake it off I tried to pray and then we started to uh, realize that this is not just me experiencing life's difficulties but this was something deeper this was something demonic and something that the devil started to attack me and so how many of you know that the devil he never plays fair never you know acute trauma and stress can trigger certain things in you but the demons they are evil the devil he is so evil he always takes advantage of the lowest point of your life and, and when you're on a on a bottom emotionally or physically he comes and he likes to ride that wave and so not only i experience challenges uh, uh normal life's challenges but on the top of that they became demonic challenges and then we started to seek for a solution uh, we realized that this is more demonic than not we started to listen about deliverance about generational curses I started to learn that was brand new to me I started to learn about those things and realized that hey this is this is I, I, I need deliverance and then I started to realize that certain things that I was experiencing emotionally I saw that in my uh, bloodline I saw that some women in my bloodline experienced similar things and I'm realizing oh my gosh that generational curse that was running through got triggered and now I am experiencing the same thing and so what I we started to do is we started to fight spiritually against that issue and I'm going to come back to my testimony how the Lord actually got set me free um, but right now I would like to start with the part about deliverance and the strongholds and I will title my message and my teaching to that tonight uh, breaking down mental strongholds so to receive freedom I was so desperate for freedom and to receive freedom it's like a two-side coin there is a deliverance part and then there is a breaking down of mental strongholds part okay in John 8 36 it says whom the Son sets free is free indeed that speaks of a casting out of demon through the anointing through the touch of God the Son sets you free the demon is out you are free but then John 8 32 it says when you will know the and then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free this speaks of Jesus's truth breaking down our mental strongholds so the anointing drives out demons and the truth breaks down the strongholds it's not the presence of the truth that sets us free but the application of the truth it's like having soap in your house and never uh, using it you know you have that soap, but you will never be clean unless you use it same thing with the truth of God's Word if you can have God's Word but if you don't apply it if you don't speak it if you don't receive it if you don't read it you will not be set free Jesus said that he is the truth and he is the person as we get to know him he's the one that breaks down and helps us to receive that freedom so the difference between a demon and a stronghold is a stronghold is a house of thoughts basically it's a house where demons like to live okay you break you remove the house you break down the house and demon has nowhere to go Matthew 12 29 it says how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man so the strong man is an evil spirit that plunders peace, joy, uh, happiness, ability to worship in freedom and health sometimes and all of the things that come with, with the blessings of the Lord. We, we must bind and remove that evil spirit first before we can plunder his house, speaking of uh, rebuilding our, ourselves. demons they enter quickly and they usually exit quickly strongholds 
are built over time and they get destroyed, broken down over time. And the devil, he lives in those strongholds. So when I was experiencing all those demonic attacks, I also realized how the devil was able to build those strongholds in my, in my mind. And I received those lies in my head. Lies, so many lies that I had to uh, brick by brick basically take down and, and uh, break it down. There are three kinds of stages of mind we can find ourselves in. First one is a slave. That is a victim mentality. Second one is a survival, survivor, wilderness mentality. It's like you're in the middle. You're not a slave, but you're also not an overcomer yet. And this is where I found myself. I remember receiving a prophecy and a prayer for deliverance from one of the ministers and I received it. I believe that the curse, the generational curse was broken. I received my freedom. But then my suffering continued. My suffering continued. And I realized that I needed to clean my mind, cleanse my mind. I needed to, those lies that the devil is tormenting me by still, they are still there and they need to be taken down. They need to be broken down. And I started to kind of work on myself. It's like a fight. When a generational curse is broken, it's like you were in jail and... You got released from jail and your hands are untied, right? But you still need to, and you have a chance now to fight for yourself. And this is what I started to do. I started to literally listen to the sermons on the Holy Spirit almost eight hours a day. I had a job that actually allowed me to do that. And I was literally brainwashing myself. And the presence of the Holy Spirit began to touch me. And I, was, I felt like I was an onion. He was peeling things off of my mind. The lies that I believed in. The, the hatred that I was carrying. All of those things. And the Holy Spirit started to work on me. He started to brick by brick break down those strongholds. But it took time. It, it wasn't overnight that I received my freedom. And that I was able to... Uh, I would say be myself again. It took so much time. But to come to number three, to be a soldier with the mentality of sonship, it takes work. We have to work with the Holy Spirit and allow Him to break down those strongholds. And we have to renew our mind to walk in freedom. Remember, um, look at what the Lord said about enemies that stayed in the promised land. So look at the nation of Israel. They were slaves for over 400 years in Egypt. They were in bondage. They needed a deliverance. The Lord sent a deliverer, a Moses, a person who delivered them out of the bondage. And that's gonna, it's like a picture of receiving a deliverance from a demon, okay? And now they entered this wilderness right? This, they are survivors. They entered the wilderness and they, but they were not in a promised land, promised land yet. They were just in that stage, in the, in, in the middle. And that's where I found myself. And that stage was so hard because you want to give up. You just want to give up and you want to say, you know what, I'm just going to live here. I'm going to be living in, in, in torment. I'm going to just carry this depression all my life. I'm going to be anxious always uh, being this awful person and you know the the crazy thing is that in the beginning I actually thought I was such a horrible person and this is the plan of the enemy he wants to convince you that it's all you and it's all about you you are a bad person there is no hope for you there is no way out for you and this is what I was convinced with in in my head but when I realized that it's the devil's lies and I had to separate myself that you know what, the torments that I'm experiencing, even the hatred that I was experiencing towards people, all of these awful negative feelings, they were not mine. They were demonic. And I had to face the enemy and to realize that I was not the enemy. There was an enemy and he was lying to me. And so 
when the Lord has set me free it took years it took years of hard work with the Holy Spirit and one day I remember I woke up and I felt like a brand new person and the Holy Spirit spoke to me now you are free and from that day on I started to experience less and less nightmares until they completely subsided and stopped I started to serve at church I started to gather a group of girls my small group uh, it grew and multiplied a couple of times and then I remember my husband was trying to set up my sister with his cousin so she comes and lives in our city so 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 I will not feel all alone and she she just wouldn't budge <laughs> she would not do that and she didn't like him but <laughs> but what's interesting is that when I received freedom and I no and I no longer was lonely inside I was not depressed my sister she got married to my husband's younger brother <laughs> and eventually she moved to our town and I'm like okay I really don't need you that close anymore but Lord I take it she's my really close friend the blessings just started to flow into my life I started to be a blessing to other people and this is this is the let me just read uh, Judges 3 1 and 2 now these are the nations which the Lord left that he might test Israel by them that is all who had not known any of the war wars in Canaan this is only so that the generations of the children of Israel might be taught to know war at least those who had not formally known it look at what the Lord is doing he is he wants them to know war because they need to know dominion so once the Israel entered the promised land there was some enemies to conquer right why do you need to exercise dominion if you have nobody to exercise dominion over right so some things will be left in your life so the Lord so you can conquer them so you don't need to go from deliverance to deliverance you need to receive deliverance so you can exercise dominion over the rest of the enemies amen and when I received my personal deliverance I realized now my hands were untied to fight for myself now I had to learn to exercise dominion I have to be a warrior now and not just a victim or stuck in a limbo I had to make a decision no I have to fight now the Lord has given me authority and I have to fight and so that's what I was doing all these years fighting for my freedom step by step actively uh, listening uh, spending time in prayer sometimes I would grab a Bible and on a parking lot in my college I would sit and read it to myself out loud it was painful I didn't want to hear it I didn't want to do it I was so down but I would made my ears hear the Word of God and this is where the fight comes in you have to do it even when you don't feel it because this is how you learn to exercise dominion amen so there's four lessons that I learned through through going through this pain of receiving full freedom first one is I recognized my enemy and I faced him number two we have to seek Jesus more than our freedom because seeking because freedom is actually a byproduct of being near with Jesus Christ that was a very valuable lesson we can become so desperate for our freedom for our deliverance that we forget that we need Jesus he is the only one who can set us free and when we look so desperately for our deliverance and for certain blessings and breakthroughs we can actually be deceived by the enemy he can try to deceive us and give us something and we will take it because of our desperation our eyes has to they have to be fixed on Jesus Christ alone number three allow the Holy Spirit to take you through the process of cleansing by his presence and his word and number four learn to endure suffering 
And this one is a, <laughs> we don't like to do that. We don't like to suffer at all, especially our generation. We like it faster, better, easier, less pain, numb me, fix my teeth. Like, we, like, we don't like pain. We don't like suffering at all. It comes really hard. And this was a very hard lesson that I, that I uh, learned to learn to endure suffering. James 1, 2, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it as an opportunity for great joy. Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 2, 3, it says, Endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I wonder why James said that when troubles come, to consider that as an opportunity for joy. Have you ever thought about it? That's such a strange scripture. When I read it, it was very strange to me. Why would I consider this as an opportunity for joy when I face troubles? You know why? Because when God developed you into a, a person through suffering, you are no longer the same. The breakthrough can be gone, but who you are, who the Holy Spirit built you in to be his soldier, nobody can take that away for you, from you. This is such a powerful truth that I learned and I became a completely different person from the person that I was on the inside. I feel like I am standing on a solid rock and nobody and nothing can move me anymore. No challenges in life can move me because he has built me in that and any troubles that will come we know that God's got us right we can be joyful despite of our circumstances the person you become through the process is far more valuable than the breakthrough we are seeking sometimes so the devil he likes to play games with our mind and if we're not careful we can allow him to do that and we can allow him to bring and build in those lies in our minds. Romans 12, 2, I'm going to read. And do not be confirmed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The, the Bible talks a lot about mind renewing, right? The Lord wants us to renew our minds on a regular basis. I'm going to give you seven practical steps on how to renew your mind. Number one, don't wait for your circumstances to change before you start, start changing your mind. That's not how the Lord works. You know, I like that example my husband once brought up. Uh, when God created the light... You know that it was before God created the sun, right? God created the light first and then the sun. So we can't wait until God, but we want the sun. We want that thing. We want the breakthrough until we experience the light. But God sends the light first before he brings the sun, the thing that we're looking forward to. So number two, stop believing that you cannot control your thoughts. The Bible commands us to think about these things. Philippians 4, 8. Joshua 1, 8. You shall meditate on it day and night. Psalms 1, 2. On His law, He, has, he meditates day and night. So it's a lie that we cannot control our thoughts. We can. We can control our thoughts if we direct our mind and our thoughts towards the things, towards the Word of God and towards what God is telling us to think on the things. Number three, what you feed your mind becomes your mindset. You can't control your mindset, but you can control what you feed your mind with. So the things that we're constantly watching, constantly reading, constantly feeding ourselves, the conversations we're uh, a part of, those things, they, get, they are being gathered and become our mindset. So, and this is where we need to control what we get into our mind, what we put into our eyes, what we put into our ears. Number four, confess what you believe, not what you feel. In Joshua 1.8 it says, 
the Lord instructed Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. So confession is very important when we verbalize the word of God. Number five, resist negative thoughts and assist positive thoughts. This one is a good one. Bad thoughts, they are like weeds. They need to be pulled out. And good thoughts, they are like seeds. They need to be planted. The effort is required and it's necessary. We all know that the bad thoughts, they will just bombard our mind. They will come. They will come. And we need to stop that. We need to not allow to, for our mind to meditate on that. But the good thoughts, they will not just come like that. We have to put them in one by one, like a seed, planting that into our minds. Um, according to Caroline Leaf, she says, she studies brain, and she says that a thought becomes a physical thing in your brain. So thought, a thought is not just, oh, I thought something it's gone disappeared no it becomes like a branch in your brain that and your brain becomes wired in certain way so that's why we have to be very careful on which thoughts we accept and which thoughts we assist to be planted in our minds number six celebrate the process it's gonna take time to see the change every little step matters and we need to be happy I remember one time I was working and listening to the podcast that I was listening to and I was so exhausted. I already had some breakthrough going on in my life, but I was so tired and exhausted. I felt like I will never be fully free, God. And I was like so close to give up, so close. And I was listening to this pastor and he said one thing that really the Holy Spirit used the, those words to really bring uh, freedom into my life. He said that it takes the same amount of energy to be negative as it is to be positive. And for me that was like a light bulb <laughs> in my mind. And at that moment I decided that I will not give up. I will accept the process. I will celebrate the good things and I will never give up until I die. And that's how I'm going to receive my freedom. And that's what I believed. And the Lord, the Holy Spirit just kind of planted that assurance and decision in me that whatever it takes, how, how many years it takes, I was ready that I will fight and I will fight with the Holy Spirit to receive my freedom. And the last one before I'm going to close. Last practical tool, how to renew our mind is to expect miracles. Expectation is a breathing ground for miracles. Do not allow your mind imagine and meditate on the bad things. But expect that good things will happen. Because this is where the faith lies. When we expect the Holy Spirit to move. Expect tonight that the Holy Spirit will move. Expect that some of you tonight will receive freedom. If you're struggling with those demonic nightmares tonight is the night they will stop expect the holy spirit will move upon your behalf amen can i please invite worship team or piano please holy spirit will always honor our faith and when we expect the good things he comes i remember uh, when i just had a baby i had such a fear such intrusive the demonic fear that something bad will happen with my baby and I even started to have a little nightmares about that and I realized the devil is trying to plant those fears demonic fear that I will accept it and I had to stop and I said you know what no that's not gonna happen I will expect good things I will expect the Holy Spirit to use my son when he grows up I will not expect an accident or something bad to happen. I will work with the Holy Spirit expecting that he's going to grow up and he's going to be a man of God. He's going to serve his people. He's going to preach the word of God. And I started to speak those things out loud. And I started to have this faith rise up. And those fears, they begin to just disappear. They begin to vanish they begin to be small you know what it, do, it, it doesn't matter those are I rebuke them in the mighty name of Jesus and I started to expect 
the good things and I encourage you tonight as well do not meditate on the bad things especially if it's intrusive thoughts rebuke them and speak good things about your life speak good things for your children speak good things uh, for your family for your life amen amen can I please have you all rise in a conclusion praise the Lord amen in the conclusion I would like to read from Genesis in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters then God said let there be light and there was light and God saw the light that it was good and God di <clears throat> divided the light from the darkness I would like to speak to you right now inviting you for prayer if you find your life uh, like I just read in darkness void empty maybe you're struggling with demonic nightmares or depression intrusive thoughts the dark cloud is following you if I can put it that way if you find yourself there I want to tell you that the Holy Spirit is hovering here tonight he has been here before you came in he knows exactly what you need and he's hovering over here he's hovering over your emptiness over your darkness just like he did right here in Genesis he was hovering over over the earth over the deep waters of the darkness and that's what he's doing right now and he wants to when God said let there be light there was light we're gonna speak the Word of God we're gonna pray and we're gonna speak that those demonic things will stop over your life tonight and the light will come God will separate the darkness from the light today and if you're that person if you just find yourself you know what I need prayer I need prayer for deliverance I need I need help I want to ask you to just come up here in the simplicity we're gonna pray and believe that the Holy Spirit will do that for you tonight just like he did it for me he broke that curse over me he gave me strength to fight he stopped those nightmares he can do that for you if that's you don't be afraid please come out we're gonna pray for you today we're gonna pray and we're gonna believe that the Holy Spirit will separate that darkness from you today separate those demonic intrusive thoughts that afflict your life those evil spirits that might be tormenting you in life or bringing depression and you can't get out of it the Holy Spirit will touch you tonight especially those of you who maybe this has been a generational thing no matter what has been happening in your family we want to take a moment this is going to be your encounter when the Lord begins to break those things off of your life in Jesus name as people are coming forward I'm going to ask you, those of you here in the front, I'm going to lead you just in a few simple prayers and then we're going to go out with, with your leaders and your pastors and we're going to pray for you. Don't be afraid. You're not here to manifest. You're here to experience deliverance. And Jesus is the one that delivers. And He will meet you at the point of your need. And I also ask you that you open yourself to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is in this room. Like Lana mentioned, He's hovering over you right now. He loves you so much. Deliverance is instant. Freedom is a process. Freedom is going to continue, mind renewal, church attendance, discipleship. But deliverance is when the power of God touches you and you, you feel like something lifted, something left me, something is, is not there anymore. You go back home, you don't have those voices again. You don't have those night terrors again. You don't feel like you're constantly rejected in the church, super conscious of yourself, super jealous of your husband or your wife. And so God just wants to set you free. We prayed for people who couldn't drive behind the car wheel for four years because they were involved in a car accident. And so and God will set them free. People who were afraid of elevators, people who were just afraid of of the night of the dark God wants to set you free tonight in Jesus mighty name amen I want you those of you in the front I want you to stretch your hands like this like you're receiving I'm gonna lead you through a prayer and then we're gonna pray with you I want you to say Lord Jesus Christ I believe you are the Son of God I commit my life to you and right now 
I repent of any sin that I have allowed in my life that have opened my life to the demonic influence right now I also release forgiveness to anyone that has hurt me took advantage of me or abused me I forgive them not because I want to but because you've forgiven me I release myself from the grip of Satan from the grip of unforgiveness in the name of Jesus I renounce any involvement with the occult any entanglement with witchcraft any spell soul tie or connection to the kingdom of Satan I disconnect myself right now from every generational curse that's been plaguing my family be broken in Jesus name Lord I'm here to seek you more than my freedom more than my peace more than my deliverance you are my peace you are my deliverer and today is my night in Jesus name let's press into the Lord we're gonna pray with them. if I can invite the ministry team as well or the the, uh, the ministry team of this house let's just go among people let's just pray for them the rest of you I want you to stretch your hands forward right now and if you are baptized in the Holy Spirit you pray in your prayer language just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now come on for the next few moments the power of God is gonna start falling on people right now God is gonna start setting people free in a way some bondages they've carried for decades in this atmosphere where the Holy Spirit is present Jesus is King yoke is being broken right now in Jesus mighty name we love you Lord to place your hand on your head right now we're gonna be praying right now that our mind will not be a trash can but that our mind will be filled with the truth of God there are many of you that you've been delivered but you haven't been developed you haven't been discipled and, and your mind is a reflection of everything that's going on around in your life it's evident by your speech it's evident by your attitude it's evident by a constant expectation of something bad happening it's like your imagination is working against you it's because the mind has not been renewed and right now we're gonna pray the bible says that we we have the mind of christ we're just gonna begin to pray i want you to open up your lips begin to say lord i begin to right now just do warfare I bring down every stronghold of negativity. I bring down every stronghold of anger. I bring down every stronghold, Lord God, of rejection and fear. I bring down every stronghold, Lord. And today, Jesus, I ask you that you be my stronghold. Your truth be my tower. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I choose to speak your word. I choose to catch bad thoughts that are persistent like mice, like rats, and throw them out. I'm not gonna let them live in me. I'm not gonna let them be tolerated Lord let your peace begin to guard my heart and my mind right now come on begin to just speak God's word right now take next 60 seconds and begin to say Lord I believe in your word Jesus I accept your word your word says that I am healed your word says that I am more than a conqueror Lord I might not feel that in my body right now I might not feel that in my emotions right now Lord but that's what your word says Lord I also know that your word says that you are with me Lord you didn't abandon me you didn't forsake me you didn't throw me under the bus you didn't write me off your word says that Lord that you love me and I receive that today Lord your word says God that you died for for me your, your spirit lives inside of me so I am not just washed off broken and just rejected no I am new creation I believe in that in Jesus name I accept your word right now I battle against every contradiction every lie every conviction that is not of the Holy Spirit every persuasive intrusive thought that seeks to take dominion and take root in my heart that is not in line with your word Lord in the name of Jesus in Jesus mighty name as you keep your head keep your hand there if somebody who has you have a disorder you have like an anxiety disorder you've actually been diagnosed you're taking medication 
The Lord wants to heal you right now. There's somebody else, you have a PTSD, the traumatic, post-traumatic dis disorder. And that person, you, you were in the military and the stuff that you've seen, you, you're coming back and you're battling with that. The Lord wants to just heal your brain. He wants to touch your head, not just your mind, but also even your brain. He wants to, those, those things that were wired there to just start rewiring them by the power of the Holy Spirit. Just keep your head, head there right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak healing right now to every disorder in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak healing for especially the PTSD. I speak healing right now to, do, to those anxiety disorders in Jesus' name. Those that are, that are living on medication. That's, that's all they've known, Lord. I pray that they will begin to experience healing that will come right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. I rebuke epilepsy. I rebuke seizures in Jesus' mighty name. I speak healing to those parts in the brain maybe that are missing chemicals. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, let your restoration come right now. Restore. Maybe that injury that happened that caused certain brain damage, Lord, let your healing come right now even to our mind and to our brain. In Jesus' mighty name, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit touch us right now that we will live for your glory.